Jupiter Broadcasting presents this show in mega stereo sound. This episode of the Linux Action Show brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. Use the promo code Linux and save yourself some cash. And of course, from donations of people that are... It's like people get donated, you know? And it's free. It's free. It's tax. It's tax exempt. No, it's not. No. When you donate people, it is. It's tax. Right. You can't, Chris, you can't put a worth on person. This week on the Linux Action Show. The Linux Action Show is climbing a mountain. Why are we climbing a mountain? Because KDE 4.6 is here. We review. Then the numbers for 2010 are in, and they show that Linux professionals are worth a premium. Plus so much more, all this week on the Linux Action Show. Welcome to the Linux Action Show, Season 15, Episode 4. My name is Brian. With me is Chris. Hey there, Brian. Check out this slick ZT Systems server that runs Linux. I love a good 1U rack. You do love a good 1U, don't you, there, I, Brian? I could have like a million 1U-sized racks. <laughs> Just, just all over my house. Let me tell you. I would like cool to build this. furniture about one U racks. Go back to the picture of that. You, show, you could show picture people of that. See how flexible that is. it's like the Lego building blocks of computers. Oh yeah. Everything should be in one U racks. What you should do. Here's what I'm saying. Okay. Here. You know, you know, people used to. When people had desktops back in the, the old days, they were really the, big Herkin desktops. Back in the early days? Nobody has that anymore. They no. get little towers or slim lines yeah. or whatever. That's crap. That's garbage. Yeah. I used to have this big Herkin monolith. This, yeah. it well, was, look at that, that dude over there. That dude's a big dude. Well, that's a big dude, but mine was mine was bigger. <clears throat> mine bigger was about, than that dude. Mine was about yay big. Solid gray steel, right? The that's switch, steel. The switch on the side oh, though, was yeah, red and about those. two inches wide. And in order to turn on, you go, to chink yes. And it was awesome. Yes. Now, it was huge. And it sat right on top of the desk because there was nothing in the house large enough to accommodate the space. Desks were built for these huge, yeah. wide things. Now, what I would love... <laughs> is a case like that that could fit, say, maybe three or four 1U units. Right. Right on top of your desk. You put your monitor on top of it. Right. You slide those 1U racks right on in. That would be awesome. And here's why it's totally practical, because this whole thing, with its 16 processor cores, each running at 600 megahertz, yeah. only pulls 80 watts. No way. Yeah, way. That's Get ridiculous. ARM processors. These lights pull more than that. I know. I Oh, yeah. Uh, six... 16 processors. Ridiculous. Uh, or there's 16 cores, and they're each running at 600 megahertz. You can put SSDs in this. You can put SATA drives. Yeah, I stuff. can. This would make a really great home server. Now, unfortunately, there's no price or availability yet. What? Who's who's selling this thing? They're called ZX, I think, or, or ZT, ZT Systems. Systems. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> All right, ZT Systems. We would love four review units in a, in a single desktop. Yeah. Yeah for you style case that we can slide all those little one you racks into send it on over to us and i can guarantee that we will talk about it <laughs> while you guys are at it if you can integrate yeah. that desk with a kvm and a gigabit oh. switch in the back dude so it's right? all integrated into the desk right and power integrated into so oh. one power cord for the also whole desk. i want one of those big red switches i want it to go cha oh, yeah, yeah. to turn the whole and thing give on. me the option to also have a built-in yeah. i could add it on cost extra i don't care a built-in ups you know, so I don't have oh, a separate yeah. standalone. Just build I'll the battery what, system. You the send desk. the rest of it to us for review. We yeah. will pay for the UPS part. Yeah, that's totally deal, fair. right? Yeah, just make the make it all ready to be hooked up. No, this actually does look really sick. How many processors? Sixteen, 16 dude. Sixteen ARM processors. Yeah, man, that makes me want to buy a domain name from GoDaddy.com. Uh, if you can go to GoDaddy.com right now, just go ahead, Probably. pause the show, go to GoDaddy.com, uh, load up. Uh, uh, what's a good web browser to go to GoDaddy.com? I right? like Chrome. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Chrome. Chromium, actually. I say use Lynx. I yeah. say uh, the little L-Y-N-X, the old school How about terminal base. How about Reconk? No one uses Reconk. I'm using Reconk right now. You're not now. using Reconk. I'm, look at, I'm using Reconk right Reconk. here. Look at I that. am. That's me. Holy, holy moly. Right? You're a Reconk fool. That's, that's me and Reconk on JupiterBroadcasting.com. That is fantastic. You could actually register JupiterBroadcasting.com over at GoDaddy.com if we hadn't already done that. <laughs> yeah. And you could, you could just type in Linux, save 10%. Linux yeah. 20, save 20% off of hosting. 
awesome. Do that. GoDaddy.com. Danica Patrick. Danica Patrick Chris, at GoDaddy.com. Go over Danica Patrick. I like that, Brian. I like that quite a bit. Danica Patrick. GoDaddy.com. Thank you, you go. GoDaddy.com, for sponsoring the Linux Action Show. Use our code Linux. Yes. You know what I came across, and I hope I put Ooh. it in this episode? No. A long time ago. I mean, like a long time ago, yeah. we were in your living room and Probably. we had the mic set up. I think we were in your living room and we were naked. <laughs> Just kidding. Probably. People are amazed at how often we do the show naked. <laughs> we had a whole naked conversation before the show on the live stream. When, when he says we had a naked conversation, we were talking about nakedness. Not that we were naked having a conversation. <laughs> no, Let's no. just be clear on this. So anyways, we were in... <laughs> Brian wears layers. We, we know this yeah, to be true. Yeah. I got a shirt on. I have to have another thing over the top yeah, of this blazer yeah, here yeah. Uh, just to feel comfortable. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cozy getting, getting in here with Chris I all know. naked. I'm just not so okay with it. We were in your office or your living room and we recorded a bunch of these um uh you know godaddy.com sponsors oh, the yeah, action yeah. show and you know so do listeners like you and stuff like that and i found a bunch of the old ones that you screwed up <laughs> did you really yeah they're great i'm glad so, we saved everything so yeah i think we should use a few of them because they're really good so are they yeah yeah so All we'll right. see keep an ear out for that audience why the hell oh, and while we're at the top of the show before we forget just a heads up about next sunday oh yes <clears throat> we we probably won't be here now there may be a show if if there is a show who knows but it'll be like a short show yeah, it's not it, and that's even if there is one i mean let's let's be real so we got multiple things going on we got super bowl yep super bowl is going on super bowl's going on also i'm having a baby this week um so, so that's uh, going on uh, I'm, I'm making i'm making child so uh my you'll probably be busy next weekend i might be a little busy oh so uh yeah so uh, my wife's going in and uh, uh you know i I don't even know what's going to be happening. Like, no. by come next Sunday, I don't know if I'll be home yet. I, right. I, don't, I don't know what. So, That's so no the way show. That works. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on uh, on wife and baby, mm -hmm. uh, having a little girl. Yeah, kind of exciting. That is exciting. Got the got the nursery all kicking are butt. You, are it's you going to awesome. tweet out and stuff so people are interested? Or are you going to let people know when the uh, tweet event? out? Well, you know, whatever you need to do to let people know that the kid has arrived. People oh, want to know. I'll let I'll let people know. Yeah. I'll let people know somehow. Post a picture somewhere. I'll be like, that's my baby. There you go. Yeah, of course I will. All right, I want to tell you about my Android pick. Are you ready, Brian Man? You ready for this sucker? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Well, this is a this is an exciting pick because it's not just an Android pick. Because uh this week we announced the Jupiter Broadcasting live audio stream over at jupiterbroadcasting.com slash listen. So that's cool. Good you good URL. Yeah, I love it. Right? So and you can go there on your smartphone now. iPhone users they just have QuickTime built into Safari, and yeah. it'll just play the MP3 stream, no problem. Yep. Android users, though, I got a pick for you. Uh, so I want to tell you, I'll give you, first of all, go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash listen after you and get this And you can do it on install. your desktop, too. Oh, yeah, totally. It'll yeah. stream in, in yeah, DLC like, or like whatever. It's like the most simple-looking web page yeah, it's ever low, created. Yeah, it's, if, you, if you see the video version now, it is, it is ridiculous so this how is, simple it is. We're looking on my Android phone. It literally just says the text, stream audio live. It doesn't even yeah. say who we are. We're, we've already <laughs> it got... It doesn't uh, even no, say no. what you're going to stream. Well, I think you're just going to stream. Listen, but we got a couple yeah. of uh, folks that have offered to help us pretty it up. We will. But the main goal was to make it bandwidth-friendly. Because I want you to head over to uh, our show notes and grab the uh, link in there for Stream Furious. Stream Good Furious, name. right? Yeah. Is just that. It lets you stream audio streams and it'll associate with playlist files and things like that. Nice. So you get that loaded up on your Android phone and that's Stream Furious in the marketplace. Totally well, like free. save it so like it knows. So you can just go right back to Dude, that instead totally. of going to the listen page. Yeah, check this out. Check this out. It's really handy. So. Over here on my, if I click on the MP3 stream, because Make it, stream. it opens up Stream Furious and adds Jupiter Broadcasting right to the top of the station's playlist now. So from now on, I just go back into Stream Furious and, and Jupiter Broadcasting is just right there at the top. Now, are we streaming right now for this? Yeah. Yeah, we're always live from now on. That's fantastic. So, uh, you know, usually what we do is we have some live stream events going during the day. Um, on on Mondays after Linux Action Show comes out, it's all the old episodes of Linux Action Show are on the reruns all day. Yeah. On Tuesdays, it's generally Stoked all day because that's when Stoked comes out. Wednesdays is generally the best of our recent shows. Thursdays tends to be Jupiter at Night. I mean, we have like days. That's awesome. Sundays that's after. Awesome. Your, yeah, and Sundays you could listen to live on the Linux Action Show, or you know, heck. You could uh, tune in after Linux Action Show if you miss it, and we generally run old Computer Chronicles episodes, and that's also on the live. You stream. gotta love that. So uh, and Stream Furious here is really nice. It. It does uh, some buffering there, and so uh, you know, usually what we do is we have some. Live that was us just like a minute ago. Isn't that neat? That's right. Just like a moment ago, that was that. So that's Stream Furious, awesome. and go over to JupiterBroadcasting.com/listen, um, and you can use anything that can stream audio streams to to check that. I out. love that. Right? That's awesome. Pretty cool. All right, Brian, let's do the news. <laughs> Whoa. 
What's new in the news this week? All right, Brian. Our top story on the news docket for this week is a good one. Is it? Uh, Linux is it good? IT experts are drawing a premium in the job market. Dude, they have been for years, though. I know, I know. But there's actually some pretty solid data now from uh, just even in 2010. Nice. And it's 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 if you read the overall article, it's kind of less than great news for the overall IT job market. But yeah. the overall silver lining of it is is that skills in the open source uh, area field are in particular demand still. And this is according to Dice.com, who's seen a dramatic uh, increase in hirings and people requesting Linux a uh, Linux Action Show jobs, Brian. Linux Action Show jobs? Yeah. Yeah. Jobs for people with experience watching the Linux Action Show are going up. But uh, Intel's noticed this trend as well. Yeah. And so uh, Intel's Linux and open source technologist, uh, Dirk Hondell. Nice name. Thank you. I thought so as well. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Chris. <laughs> He's he's chimed in and said, more and more devices and systems and services are built and based on Linux, and therefore, more and more manufacturers and vendors are looking for the talent. Well, surprise, surprise. Duh. But it, it's kind of it's kind of cool to see you know people from Intel, people from Dice.com. Uh, there's uh, I like the therefore he threw in. It made yeah. it sound very official. Therefore, therefore, as I foresee it. Yeah, here to logical. Here to for yeah. Huh, what what? Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, he says that uh, Linux... Oh, this is Dice going on. Uh, so back to Dice. Uh, they say <laughs> Linux professionals also tend to get a significant salary premium yep. as much as 10% over other IT workers, according to Dice. Dude, it's true, man. I agree. It's totally true. <clears throat> I mean, I've, I've worked on like... I've worked on the Windows side of things. I've worked on the Mac side of things. I've worked on the Linux side of things. Yeah. And it's it's actually been pretty consistent. Yeah. Linux side of things has always paid better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and because the Windows side of things, Microsoft took that whole approach and flooded the market with the yeah. MCPs and all those types of things. You know what I've noticed? So if you're like a, an independent software consultant, like you're the kind of guy who you make software for a living, like, you know, a company will come to you and they're like, I want to make a new version of a notepad type app. And you're like, okay, well, I can do that. And you start making bids and you're like, okay, yeah. you'll pay me to do that. If you're doing it for Windows, it's pretty okay money. If you're doing it for Mac, they want to pay you $5. They really want you to do it for $5, and they get mad at you if you don't also supply like a huge giant icon and make it aqualicious or whatever. How did this turn into Mac bashing? And already? then, but then if you do it on the Linux side of things, yeah. you get paid more than the Windows side of things. Well, I guess it's, it's more of a special. Phenomenal. Thing. It's more of a special. I think that's all it is. Because the Windows market is so large, and there's so many people out there that have been trained on it. But, they, but they, you still do pretty well on the Windows side. Uh, but the Mac side, you don't make any money. Yeah. Not anymore, anyway. Well, I mean, it used to be pretty decent, but well, uh, the do. Linux side, geez, you it's just awesome. Use uh, open source. There even you go. even in my experience, and this is and this may seem crazy to some people, like uh, GTK apps. Like, you want to make a GTK app for a company? There aren't necessarily as many companies looking for that. Yeah, but when they do, they pay well. It's great. It's got to be the specialty of it, right? It's got to be. But either way, for us, it's awesome. Doesn't that mean though that as as it grows? Yeah. Well, here's here's the thing. If the market size of, say, desktop Linux grows, right. the need for those apps grows at, along with it. So now, in of, order for mm. it to make it so that we'll start earning less, the amount of people that are specializing in that market Would has to, to grow faster. Right. Which right now, it's not. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's awesome. I like. All right. I want to talk about something I'm really excited about as an Android user, despite... Some of the, you know, things that we said about Google recently, I'm still, I mean, I'm using Chrome right now and I'm still an Android fan. I don't, you know, I don't hate them. But Sony <laughs> has announced that the PlayStation suite for Android gaming store for gingerbread devices will be arriving. That's cool. This is a lot, what I, what that was, was a lot of headline because it's a couple of different things that Sony's doing. Yeah. First up, the thing you're going to see first as an end user is, and this is one part what Sony has said Two parts, what Chris went out and read, what every single person has written about this and has put together in his brain. So uh, we have no idea it's accurate, if this is accurate. It's yeah. as accurate as Mr. Spock calculating <coughs> slingshotting around from the sun from memory in Star Trek 4, Brian. Dude, and he did that. Right? Yeah. So, so this, this has got to be accurate. <laughs> Thank you. Anecdote taken. Thank you. Now, uh, what you're it welcome. looks like is the first thing you're going to see roll out on Android devices, gingerbread only, is uh, a Sony software store. Like a whole Sony store of crap. Right, and it's just going to be crap. But then the next, wait, wait, why do you know it's going to be crap? Because the first product they're even, they're, it looks like they're going to launch a store before their first actual software products in there. So what's going to be in there then? Well, that's what Canonical did. They launched the Ubuntu soft. Well, come on, that's <laughs> cool. I mean, you got to get it out there. Yeah, okay. You got to okay. get a store know, out there. So it's not that it's not full of 
it's not that it's full of crap. It's just that it doesn't have a lot of stuff in right, it. Right, right. So but that's cool. But guess what? It is going to get quickly. And this What's is what I'm get? excited about: a PlayStation One Classics emulator in the Android store. That's cool. It's not going to be hardware device locked. It's just going to be you oh. need gingerbread. You can get it on your, any Android theoretically Ooh, so far. I wonder how the phone. controls are going to be. Well, so have you seen the Sony Xperia? It's going to. Yeah. It's the, that's that's going to be their premier device. And then the rest of them maybe have some like touch screen. They're going to have on screen controls. Okay. Yeah. So the, so the software is going to be able to detect that. So. Interesting enough, uh, and then after that, they're going to come out with um, you know that that Xperia device with more and more and more games on there. They've already shown a bunch of the games on there. There are you know um, some less than legit PlayStation emulators you can get now. Sure. So it's not too surprising that they're going to be able to pull this off. I don't. They don't go into when I was looking for what is it about gingerbread. You know what? Why gingerbread? Why do you need? Why not Froyo? I don't know. It it could just be that they want to make sure they want to have a certain class of devices. I was thinking. And if you just say, oh, okay, gingerbread, you know the or, device will be peppy enough. Or some sort of multimedia support that gingerbread probably got added. Yeah, maybe. Because there's there's plenty of stuff in the current API for Android to, to pull this off. But then you have to worry about, well, we support this device, but not that device, but not this device. And then we do support that device. Just say yeah. gingerbread and we're just like anything that's yep. gingerbread. Yep. Yeah. That's a way easier way to go. Yeah. Then uh, Sony can be lazier, and that's this, better. Though, for them. This could be huge for Android. It could be huge. Because they're kind of, you know, they've got Angry Birds, they've got like uh, yeah. Fruit Ninja, they've got the, some. Ga- of those. The gaming market on Android really is kind of kind of lackluster. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. a couple of cool too, titles, but yeah. but if they get uh, like, you know, like say 100 PS1 games, like the really good ones. That's nuts, right? That's crazy. Like get Final Fantasy Tactics and all those other oh. things on there. That'd and you be could killer. Get, you could get Grand Theft Auto on a little device like that. You could really have a good time. And then yeah. they, they don't have to be, they can go on from the PlayStation 1. Right. So once you've got people going to that store, yeah. then you start, yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so the next story on the news docket for this week. Now, this is early days stuff, but it's exciting, and I want to talk on it. So this is one of these things that maybe we talk about right now that we don't even see anything for from like two years. Okay. So early days stuff. I'm ready to not get something. But, Lay it uh, on me. What? Uh, tell me what I am not going to be able to use today. The big boy distributions got together at a conference and started talking the talk necessary to make a unified app store or application installation and distribution system okay. for all the distros. Okay. Uh, so now this is, like I said, just early stuff, nothing af- major official yet, but uh, here, uh, here is basically the gist. For, for the last three days, and this is coming from a poster over on the Fedora mailing list, uh, for the last three days, I attended a conference on application installing in Germany, hosted by, hosted by Vincent Utz of, and the other guys okay. from SUSE. Nice. There were experts sent from Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE, and Mandriva. From, from Fedora, both Florian and I attended. Nice. And they go on to talk about how they were defining some APIs that they could share and use across, and some interchange formats, and some basic UI shared principles that they all should follow, with specific mention that the Ubuntu Software Center looks nice, and that they they want to have this unified API possibly in the future, maybe for, hmm. maybe for an app store, maybe just to distribute software. They stood with the specific intention of, and I like this line, um... Making, installing, and removing software on Linux suck less. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. Isn't that great news? Yeah. So they've, they, they said they have lots of progress and people are willing to help solve this common problem. That's what they walked away. And he said that the main thing was is that he felt like the right people from, the, from those distributions and groups were at this conference. So it wasn't like, you know, the icon theme guy was there talking about a software right, API. Right, right, right. They had the right people. Yeah. In that's awesome. That's really I, good I love news. That. And that's like, this is the kind of internal stuff that as open source users and, and Linux users that we get insight to that, you know, I'm sure Microsoft has lengthy discussions about creating some sort of Microsoft app oh, store. Oh, sure, yeah. But none of that is exposed to us. No. And there's, you know, there's people out there in the future that use those products that will be impacted by those decisions. I love it. I would love to see something like the Ubuntu Software Center with the store built yeah. in. Yeah. Across all platforms. That would be great for me. Well, even if it was just to distribute like the that. open source versions of like, so think about like the Ubuntu Software Center. What if its store was driven and managed by Canonical, the store section? Sure. But the software sources section, this is like five years down the road. The software sources section could be from this open API awesome. platform. I mean, that would just be phenomenal. Yeah. And then, yeah. That could be really cool. So I'm excited about that. It's a story I'm going to keep uh, an eye on, and I will put a link to the full mailing thread in the show notes if you want to read more about that That's yourself. very cool. That's very, very cool. All right, Brian. Well, that's all the news for this week. All right. We need to talk about KDE for a little bit because it's actually been a little while since we've really dived, yeah. dove in, hmm. dived it. 
took a swam uh, into yeah swammed uh paddled around in the kde <laughs> pool uh so kde 4.6 just came out this week yeah dude and it's actually quite cool um but we i, I want to talk about kind of what it is they're doing a little bit here because i want everyone to have a little backstory mm-hmm. we are going to review it yeah but i think that everyone needs to have a little bit of a context. understanding here so now if you go over to kde.org you can you can take a look and you know they got uh they, they got this little elegant thing going on and you know they tell you to experience freedom which i want to do oh i love i love freedom Pe- people in egypt want freedom yeah they're not getting it they're not getting their internet freedom that's my only commentary for the day um so they, they came out with 4.6 and they've been pretty good since 4.0 came out about kind of evolutionary updates yeah you know when 4.0 hit that was the we, we're putting our flagpole and we've, right. we've got to make our call and just get this product whole out. new whole new whole new platform really yeah, yeah. you know this is kd4 is not like anything you've seen before right and you know they have the plasma widgets and they had everything else going yeah. on and yep. man was it rough <laughs> it was really rough we we yeah. reviewed it and both of us looked at it and said this looks cool we this can see has where they're cool going. stuff uh, and I love being able to rotate my widgets in a circle, but I'm not going to use it. Right. Because as a day-to-day system, 4.0 just wasn't there. Yeah, I stayed with GNOME. And 4.1 came. And 4.2 came. And four, you can see where this is going Kinda. numerically. It got better each time. Better and better and better. Then around 4.4, we looked at it and we're like, okay, you can actually use this Yeah, i You can so. stick with this. Yeah. 4.5 came. It was even better. So now 4.6 is here. Now, with that track record of it getting better every time, you got kind of high expectations. You're looking at that. You're like, this This really got to be rocking, you know? Yeah. This can't take any steps back. This can't be a one step forward, two steps back system. Right. 4.6 has got to be amazing. Right. And it is. Oh, I thought you were going for a twist. Nope. I you were gonna... It's quite awesome. Now, I want to I wanna walk through a couple of things. I'm going to walk through what they've talked about yeah. as the big top things. And then I'm going to talk about some other things. Yeah. I got it loaded here too, and I'll, I'm going to poke around at yeah, a few things. So, too. so Chris has got it loaded up over here. Uh, now, one of the things I want to I want to point out. Now, Chris, load up a load up a screen and and do some stuff with it. Here. I'm going to load up a screen and do some. Now, stuff. here's now here's Dolphin. Here's here's your standard file browser, which I've given a lot of love to Dolphin before. I like Dolphin. It's a great file browser. They've done an awesome job with it. Lots of power. Really well designed. Good look and feel. I really like it a lot. Yeah. Um, but here's what's some great stuff. Now, Chris is running under VMware right now. Mm-hmm. Compositing is working great. It is, yeah. And it is fast, and it is glorious. It, it, it is working phenomenally well. Now, sure, we've seen this in software before, but this is just working really well. Mm-hmm. So I've got to give them a little a little hat trick to that. That's 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 good stuff. Yeah. And you know, there's also a night. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that they touch on, and they obviously try to drive. You know, elegantly yours is there is there. It's, that's kind of catchy too, because you know it's free and it's open source and all that. Uh, but it it. Those kind of things do give it sort of an elegant kind of. It does. It gives feel. it that polish that a system needs. So yeah. now I know. I know. Come on, come on. Compositing and you know a couple of uh, you know whiz bang looky features. That's not really what makes it. You know, yeah, you know. and it, it's nice. It's nice to have. I like it. Um, and it, it makes me want to give them a high five. But we got to move on to some of the other things that are a little more nerdy here. Yeah. So I want to talk about Dolphin for a minute. Yeah. Now, at first glance, the new version of Dolphin, which they tout as this big new release, doesn't seem all that new. In fact, it seems exactly like what you had sure, before. Sure. Until you get really nerdy about it and you dive in here. Now, now KDE is moving away from uh, SVN for their source code repository to Git. Yeah. The cool... Now that. You know, you can have whatever feelings you want about various types of source control. In fact, most of you probably don't even use types of source because you're not doing this sort of work. But what's cool is if you are a developer, now Dolphin has a Git plugin. So you can actually manage your calling, Git repositories. Are they calling this faceted browsing? Is that what they mean? Where it's faceted as you can facet in a new functionality? Is that what they're kind of going for there? I've been having a hard time figuring out Because I know that I can't facet means. either that or they have a new... See, they have this the new... view. They, yeah, they have this new view and... Okay. I, th- I think that might, yeah, that's what it Multi-faceted is. Multi-faceted browsing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, face it. Okay. Faceted, yeah. So uh, they so have they have plugins for SVN, so you can just... And Git. Oh. So now that's the cool thing. So if so you you're browse using like Git, a file system. Right. So now y- you can set up, and this is what's kind of cool, I think. So um, like I use Dropbox at home. Now, what I also have is a home server right. running Bazaar right. and running SVN and running Git. Now, why do I, I have a whole lot of different things because you you know, we have a lot of different different source code repositories we work with we need it but what's cool here is you can really create your own file system backup system that actually has file versioning 
through Git using something like the Git plugin that Dolphin has. Yeah. And it makes it super and then, simple. Are you saying store great. it in your Dropbox? Then it's not a, not in your Dropbox on your home server. Mm. So like I have a home server with with all of that, and then I have a script that syncs it to my oh, okay. Dropbox. Okay. So then I always have my latest and greatest in my Dropbox. Yeah. But if I want to say, you know what, I really want to go back to a previous yeah. version, not just of source control of um, you know, open office documents right. with different versions. Right. In the past, every time I check it in, I've got a new version in there. That's cool. So I can do that and I can browse all of that right from Dolphin. I like that. Which is really, really nice. Yeah. Now they've, you know, they, they've got a lot of other improvements. I'm going to actually jump past most of that. Okay. All right. So. Boy, I got I, I'd like to give a mention to the, uh, to the new file, to the new picture viewer. Oh, you want to talk about, you want to talk nuts, about Gwen view? Yeah, it is nuts. It can export to just about everything. It's not just Gwenview. It's KDE, dude. It's the back end. Scroll well, down. K Snapshot has some of the same thing. It's the back end. See, this is the thing. They've made improvements to their back end uh, phone on system and their back end video stuff, including uh, the switch over for hardware support from uh, from HAL to yep. uh, UDEV. And yep. they're, uh, it's going, they're, they're dropping support for Zine now, but you can go for VLC for your audio back end yes. or you can use GStreamer. Very, very cool. Now, just, just to run through this, because this is ridiculous. So I, taking a snapshot or using the standard picture viewer, here's some things you can export to. Now, I know a simple feature like exporting to, say, Flickr or something, that's not that big of a deal. It's nice, though. However, here's just the list. You, so if, take a snapshot. You can send it to GIMP, Gwenview, uh, Krita and Ocular, you know, all the various KDFs. Sure. Export it to your iPod. Print it, Zoomer, Flickr, uh, Smug Mug, sending it over to a remote computer, exporting export to a flash, flash file, uh, export to Picasso Web, create an HTML thing, export to gallery. So if you have a gallery setup, which is yeah, what I yeah, use for my yeah. personal gallery on your website, export to Facebook, send to your instant messaging contacts. It actually lists all of your contacts. Yeah, you that go into got. that option and then it's send to <laughs> this guy. So literally, Chris can be online. The integration logged crazy. on to instant mess aim. Let's say, and I'm yeah. in aim. Yeah. We can go in, boom, and say screenshot. Chris, look what I just did. And you know, it's got a picture of I don't know a, a dancing donkey or something. Lemon screenshot party. send to Chris. Boom, sends it to him. I, I don't have to go to multiple apps. It's all right there. KDE has always cool. had the integration down really well comparatively to probably the GNOME side of things, but now it's even it's even more nuts. Uh, but there's also been some moves in KDE 4.6, I think, that you could point to as obvious indications that they're developing for the Mego platform in mind. So here, so here's the thing. So KDE is all based on Qt, yeah, or Qt, yeah. or however you want to say it. So that's awesome. Yeah. Right. So that that's that's cool. Obviously, it's on every platform. That's the cool thing about Qt. Yeah. Powered by the power of the Nokia masters. Um. So. Marble is a mapping application. It is a routing, mapping, driving, charting type application. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, whatever people use. What do you use for that, Chris? G usually Google Earth. Google Google Earth or Google Maps or something. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those kind of things. So here's the thing. Here's Throw up a screenshot here. Boom. Uh, all right, see in the background yeah. here? That's uh, that's kind of a desktop version. So you go, you got directions. Turn left at this place. And, you know, here's your map. And, you know, here's how I route it and all that. Scroll down a little bit. Same app running on Mego. Yes. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Uh, basically, they just customize the UI a little bit, resize it, boom, uses all the guts. Um, still using Qt. Totally awesome. Uh, and and now, that's not necessarily now this simple app. Marble is a great you know turn by turn direction app. That's obviously not really the full KDE experience on on your handheld or anything. But it's cool to see all the work that's being done on these desktop yeah, apps. Yeah, or you're writing it for KDE or Migo. Going and then, over yeah to all these multiple platforms, which makes you realize maybe awesome. Migo could have a sudden burst of applications fairly easily. Yep. Uh, and I think the other thing that it points to is. A clear indication that Qt might just end up pulling ahead of GTK. Um, maybe you could argue it has. Uh, just look at look at uh, Ubuntu saying, "Hey, we're going with Unity, and we're including Qt." Yeah, they're almost saying this has real significant value. They're almost saying we're betting on the Qt horse, but we don't want to bet on the KDE horse side of it either. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know about that. I think. I, you can have one without the other, and you can have both, no problem. There's yeah, I know, no, exactly. There's no issue there. That's what I'm saying, is it seems okay. like they're saying Unity is the UI we want to go with. Qt is going to be the uh, you know a library available for you, but you look at this stuff and you can see why they want to include it. Yeah. You, can see, you can see the power of it, and KDE 4.6 is looking great. Really fantastic. Uh, one, there's, there's a couple of kind of cool things I want to call out. Another rather nerdy thing is something called K-Game Renderer, <laughs> uh, which is literally just an API set uh, that is just there for... Uh, 
well, handling game uh, graphics rendering. That's really nice. The, the cool thing is it's is it's as they put it, unifies theming across games. So it gives you, and I quote here, a more consistent, smooth look and feel. About a dozen KDE games have been ported to this new architecture, reducing memory usage and allowing them to take advantage of multi-core processors. Awesome. 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 I, I, now, now, I'm not a big fan of creating brand new frameworks and brand new libraries. And I've actually dogged the KDE guys on this before. Yeah. But in cases where it does make sense... I like it. This is great. This is good. This is unifying everything under a common API set. That means if someone goes and makes a cool game, uh, such as you know Academy or or, or Kajang, their Mahjong game, or these other things, that gives them a lot of skills that they can continue to reuse that, um, and oh, hopefully on, on Ubuntu and everywhere else. And as if K, that, K if K that game same thing around. was ever to moved over to Migo, you'd be able to maybe use that on Migo. Now, I wanted to That'd say, cool. as a laptop user here, I got I got it on a laptop here, and uh, what they've done improvement wise for laptops and I don't have any I've only been running this for like literally like a day or two oh. two days so I don't know if this is actually true or not but one of the things they touch on is they've well they say for for one a lot of code improvements a lot of code cleanup and a lot of things to make memory usage a lot smaller a lot tighter but another thing they talk a lot about is I don't want to call it the wrong thing let me see if I can find it here uh, they changed it from K power and they're moving on to a new power management system and uh, oh power Mm, uh, UPower, you, you're using UPower as the back end, yep. and they have a there's a new power management UI wrapped around it, and uh, they're switching from something else. I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I'm just going to skip it. But <laughs> the new power management system is supposed to have like that's how we handle our journalistic integrity. Instead of just being wrong, we'll say that something exists, and I don't want to find it out for yeah, yourself. Exactly, go look it up. But the part that I do like is you know how we've said a lot of times. Well, Fedora says that. Uh, this kernel checks the hardware a lot less. So your battery life right. should be a lot better, right. right? We said that a lot, and we're always like, "Why do we keep seeing that, but never seem to actually see it?" Well, the the software and the UI and all that stuff that communicates with that has to kind of be aware of that too. Yeah, everything has to work together. And and they've made those fixes now in KDE four point six to make that a, a, a you know a, a more efficient system. So you're Theoretically, we'll see, but the battery life on mobile should be a little, little more improved. And you figure if they've mo made the code a little faster, a little tighter, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to take less processor time, and that's going to use less battery too. Which is awesome. Now, on that, on that line, yeah. the, the mobile side of things. Yeah, and this is their work. They have a couple of, uh, and, I'm, uh, and this is my complaint with Katie, is I sometimes have a hard time wrapping my brain around this stuff, but they have workspaces like your traditional desktop. Yes. And then they're going to have like a workspace that's designed for netbooks. They have right. it. Right. Right. They've they've got it. So basically what they've got is basically it's it's kind of like a, it's a low profile one. So it's it's KDE trimmed down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, a little lighter in little the memory, yep. uh, a little less CPU usage. So it's going to be able to be a little bit more peppy but still have all the guts that you normally really need uh, on a on a mobile workspace. They call it the Plasma Netbook Workspace. Which is cool. Yeah, and it has a more um, smaller screen friendly layout and including it uh, looks nice. And well see this is this is where the widgets kinda work, right? On a netbook you could kinda see some more practicality to these to some of these KDE widgets, right? Mm hmm So so widgets suddenly become more interesting applications on a netbook or a tablet Possibly. Style thing. I'm not sure. It might they might be now, useless, but a couple of things based on that. Um, take a little sidebar into the widget land. One of the cool new things is QML. Um, so QML is the QT's kind of XML-ish declarative language. We talked language. about it like a long time ago, like five months yeah. ago on Linux Action Show. Um, yeah. So it's it's available right now in in the KDE 4.6. Um, but uh, it's it's basically an easy way to write or write most of your widgets uh, in kind of an XML-y declarative okay. language, right? I remember, uh, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, it, it looks very very cool. I like it. It's kind of the recommended path to go. Um, Going forward, and I, I think, and I then think if you should. use that QML, you get advan you get the advantage of all the other stuff they do, like like the audio backend stuff and the video stuff, right? You can kind yeah, of take you're, advantage. You're of the using platform. their their blessed that makes sense tool chain. Yeah. All right, so that's that's very cool. Now coming back to the mobile side of things, I was struck by uh, the netbook side of things at how, from a look and feel standpoint, how well it would work. Throw throw up that screenshot again you had with the uh, the netbook with the little uh, the widgets flying up. Scroll down that page. Use your other mouse. Yeah, I know. I got too yeah, many You're mice. using too many mice. I got All too right. many mice, Brian. That guy. Scroll down a little further. There you go. This guy right here. At how well that would work on a touchscreen right. interface or on a tablet. So I've got my little Lenovo uh, tablet, and I love her. 
I love my Lenovo tablet. Uh, you know, I run pretty much, I rotate through my OSs on it because I'm never quite 100% thrilled. Ubuntu yeah. does a really good job yeah. of having good good touch experience out of the gate. Yep. I've thrown Windows 7 on there a couple of times because, you know, they do a couple of cool things with their touch gestures. Okay. I want to play with them. Okay. <clears throat> I threw I threw QT uh, 4 point, or KDE 4.6 on here and I was not happy with the touch experience. Really? The sizing of the controls and the windows if you, if you look at it, well, I was just looking. So I have the screen here. It does not lend itself well at all. So if you to want to add a touch experience, so the widgets seem like they make good sense. But if you want to add a widget, you either have to right click or go up in this corner. Which and, actually, and now, that corner works well. I could see that, and I could see like adding here. I like this. This there's a dock that comes right. up. So so you get to a certain point through the you know through the touch screen. Even though I, I didn't have multi touch setup, I only had single touch. But still, you know that's that's a good start. Uh, and I was able to add new widgets, uh, and that was that was no problem. Move them around is fine. Uh, however, interacting with the standard UI elements, the size of them just really didn't hmm. work for my fingers. I could see like definitely in the menu system, right? It, it got a little funky. Uh, so that was my only real complaint there was that it did not work great for a touch screen. Now on a desktop, it works awesome. On a desktop, mouse. if you have a mouse yes, or a trackball, yes, yes, it works yeah. great. Yeah. I would love to see some optimizations for touch screen. And I know maybe that's not their primary purpose right now. Well, I think, I think I really, I don't know, man. I think they're putting that work into into the stuff they're going to put out on uh, well, I, th I think so. You know, with having the mobile platform stuff that they've got in there, it obviously is moving towards, you know, mobile devices, tablets, and all that sort of thing. So I've, I would really like to see that. That's kind of why I've one been big... completely video. distracted by this bouncy ball widget on Kate. There we go. I had to there kill you it. it. You was, had to kill it. You, I, you, I, couldn't I was doing it too. I was like a ball, ball. You <laughs> The ball went over there, and then yeah. it bounced off the side. What the point is then the little toolbar was up, and was watching that move with it. I think you could describe that, cool. that as a widget that is completely pointless. Uh, yeah. So, um, any closing thoughts on KDE? Um, so, so that 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 said, with that, um, so so here's the thing, though. Okay. Oh, there's now, a thing. Uh oh. Now there's been there's a, a lot of there's been a lot of performance improvements in the compositing, um, obviously in KWin, their their window manager. So that's been better and better and better. There's a lot more hardware acceleration going on than there used to be. So very, if you've got OpenGL and 3D hardware acceleration, it's not being taken advantage of by everything, by all the apps, by oh, all sure, the right, right. But by, by a lot, there's a lot of things happening in that front and that's looking really great. I love that. Now the question is, all right, lay it on me. All of these updates that are going on, and we didn't even dive into the apps, like the new, the updated applications that KDE has, all the K Office stuff are honestly spectacular. Not all of them are the best thing ever, but some of them are yeah. damned yeah. close. Really good, really um, good. It, like, like I have a really hard time, uh, you know, moving away from K Office and going back to Open Office. Oh, or and you know LibreOffice too. Even LibreOffice Libre yeah. out now. And I, I love I love Open LibreOffice, but there's a polish. But Katie K Office, but K Office is so good. I totally so very you. good with a few rough spots maybe, but it's just really good. And when you use them all together, the way all the other KDE apps integrate so well, it's phenomenal. I, yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal, especially like with the amount of stuff you can import and export. Like for graphics formats and document formats, it's just ridiculous. I think I'm honestly, I'm, I think I'm honestly done with GNOME. Are you? I think I'm done with GNOME. I just, I, I saw, you know, I'm looking at GNOME three, and I'm, I'm waiting to see where that goes. I don't know exactly, but KDE four point six kind of seems like all the stuff that they set up that they were telling us is going to be good is now it's there now, and now let's see what we get. And I'm, I'm ready to switch over and see how it works. There's enough things. I just, I'm going to try it for a couple more days before I make my final decision. I got to make my final here's, decision. Here's the thing that's that I actually come up against. Go for it. Go for it. I don't really like Amarok <laughs> as, oh, as an sure, audio sure. player. Yeah. So no, yeah, I mean this this is I mean it's it's a real thing. So like I like Banshee mm -hmm. a lot. I know and I like Tomboy. And I like Tomboy. I no, know. but now there are some good Conduit. stuff like that. Uh, Conduit's great. Now there's some great no maps, but that's Quiver. not to say that you can't have those Pigeon. apps. G edit. I like all of those. Empathy. Apps. I like all uh, of those apps. They're, they're they're great apps, but that's I, I don't like I don't like moving to one. And not having the other. Oh, for I sure. don't like that. I I can go over and I have Here's empathy thing, and Gwibber over on the gnome side. Have you ran some gnome apps? K I the have. KDE four point six theme, uh, and if you can, it handles it well, and you comply the same theme. There's a theme, a similar theme. You comply to GTK. They look really good. Yeah. The only problem is the integration stuff. Like when, yeah. when you have the K apps, 
they integrate so well with and each other. And then you other. open up a GTK app and it's open dialogue just doesn't fit. Right. It doesn't have the same favorites. And it's like when when uh you know Ubuntu uh you know ten point ten came out mm-hmm. and they had, you know, the the me menu with mm-hmm. all of your messaging and your your social networking stuff all in one spot integrated together. We're like, you know what? That's really damn slick. And KDE's got a lot of that same stuff going on. I hate to start mismatching the apps yep. and not have I know. That, and miss That's out on that switched. awesome experience. That's why I haven't switched right there because I want the full integration. And I now, think we're there. I, I think I think so too. Now I'm I'm gonna give it a little more time. So I've got this yeah. running on my on my tablet at home, on my little Novo netbook tablet doodad. Uh performance has been great, integration's been great. Uh there's a few things I miss from the GNOME side, but not too many. Um, so, so I'm going to keep going with that. Uh, now, I've been running this mostly on OpenSUSE with KDE 4.6. It's I been had a, quite good. I had a butt of a time getting to work on OpenSUSE. It installed, but then a bunch of the stuff, uh, like the theming engine quit, and I had Ooh. constant crashes. No good. Uh, so literally, like I, 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 I ran for the first half day on OpenSUSE, and I gave up. I switched over when I read down at the bottom of the KDE page, and they said, well, here's the PPA yeah. to have it working in Kubuntu. And I thought, well... Oh, right, yeah, and so I I, I followed that. And it was yeah, I tried that. It worked too. Yeah, it it's great. real easy. And but I, I, I open SUSE right now with with KD four point six. Um, I don't know. I think is is this the way I'm gonna go? Pro- probably not. I still have the problem where I make software for a living. And you use GTK? And most most Linux desktop users use That's GNOME right. and GTK. Is that gonna change over time? Maybe. Maybe so that's that's where I'm looking at. I'm like, is which which direction is it heading? And I would like to be able to have you know the software I make available, you know, native for both. Oh, even yeah. though there's not a whole lot of benefit to that, it's still kind of cool. Yep. So so that's the thing is I have to use a gnome based system so I can test it all out. So I always have to have at least one gnome based system that's around. A tough call. But I'm really digging KDE 4.6. The team's done a great job. Uh, honestly, this is some of the best of the open source uh, experience. And this, has to offer honestly, right Brian. We're using this before one of the big distros gets their hands on it. This is just yeah. This is installed. These are the packages but not supported yeah. on those distros. So when this when this gets when this sucker gets polished up, see this is me. I'm polishing the side of KD. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're doing there. No, nope. I don't. No. I don't see what you're doing. Yeah, I I, I really don't. Ryan, I'm, I don't see what you're doing. No. Are, you, are you changing gears in a truck? I was, I was I was like, this is the side, and I'm buffing. Oh, you mean you mean like like a wax on wax yeah, off yeah, sort of thing? Go, there there you, go. you go. If yeah. you did this, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Richie, but Richie. What does that even mean, dude? I don't know what that is a is a is a symbol for. If man, if you're listening to it and not watching the show, you missed out right there. Because Chris just made up a whole new hand gesture that no one's ever done before. I, I like that. It. Means nothing. That's the KDE 4.6 hand gesture, Brian. It's it's polishing KDE 4 while changing into reverse on my truck. I think that's what he was doing. Anyway. Do I recommend, I highly, highly, if you have not run, especially if you haven't run KDE since like 4.4 oh, or, or earlier. Oh my God, I was going to say this. Install this. I got an email from a listener because I was talking in the chat room. Hey, yeah, we're checking out KDE 4.6 coming up this week on last. And I got an email from that guy. He's like, hey, I was lurking in the chat room. I'm like, okay. Um, I still use KDE 3. And I'd really like to hear your thoughts after you use this, if you think it's ready, if right, it's time dude, to switch. If you're using KDE 3, oh my gosh. you are wrong. <laughs> yeah. Here's here's how it is. KDE 3 is great. It's very configurable. If you've been using it for a while, you know it inside and out. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but that's the only bad benefit, guys. but it is so it is, time to move on. It's been dead for years now. Uh, and at this point, KDE 4.6 is great. Yeah. It is great. It's if elegant. You've, it's elegant. And again, if you used any KDE, KDE 3.X or KDE 4.0 through say 4.3, 4.4, and that was the last one you've used. If you haven't tried 4.5 or 4.6, try 4.6 because they've done so much polishing. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotten so much better that it it really deserves a second look. Uh, now, you know, even if you just throw it in, you know, VirtualBox or VMware, just give it a try that way. But I'm going to tell you this straight. Nothing beats the experience of running it on native hardware with OpenGL sure, supported. Of course. It runs so butter smooth, so silky smooth, it's creamy. Just just creamy. Like Sounds a delicious tasty, milkshake. This is what it tastes like. It's like a delicious Wait, Brian, or what? Can we can we go get milkshakes? That sounds really good. Or a malt. Dude, have you like a root beer malt? There's a malt. Chocolate there's a malt, malt place oh. down down the street down there. Let's go get let's go get them. So so go Make try it out. Good. Even if you're not gonna stick with it, because honestly. When you, what you see happening with, say, the GNOME shell with GNOME 3, try this out. I recommend the GNOME guys really spend a few days, spend a week, GNOME guys, in KDE 4.6. I'm not saying you need to make GNOME shell look like KDE 4.6. <laughs> what I am no. saying is there are Go some great way. ideas here. They've done some great amount of polish. They've tackled some of the same issues you guys are trying to tackle. 
and they've done yeah, a great job true. on it. And honestly, there is room for improvement. So maybe you guys can improve on it. But try it out. Live in it. Really give it a go. But stop using KDE 3. Move to KDE 4.6. There will be a growing pain, a transition pain for you if you're a main KDE user. But do it. Do it now before you it know, gets too late. Here's my closing thoughts on KDE 4.6. Uh, I don't know if I said it much publicly when they first launched KDE 4 and KDE 4.1, etc. I felt like the guys were spending, the, the KDE project, the guys and gals, were spending too much time building amazing, awesome infrastructure. Yeah, Because it's too. fun to build. It is. And I feel like now we're truly seeing that some of that infrastructure still being worked on. There's some new infrastructure introduced in KDE 4.6, which not everyone agrees with. But for the most part, we're starting to see some of the real benefits being reaped from that yep. work. Now, I'm... In my opinion, I'm happy. In my opinion, I'm still seeing a little bit too much movement in terms of like the underlying yep. frameworks. I wish that would slow down and just a little for a while. And it's not 100 percent yet, to be honest with you. Uh, even just while demo demoing it here, I had some application crashes. Yes. So I'm I'm really excited once a once a distribution really ships this sucker wrapped up. You know, when OpenSUSE ships with it or uh, Fedora 15 or Ubuntu, whatever you want to make it, man, whatever it is, I think it's gonna be great. What was the one you said between OpenSUSE and Ubuntu? Say Mandrake, Mandriva, whatever it is. Oh. Oh, Fedora. A what? What? A fedora, Brian. Oh, you mean Red Hat? I don't think anyone's used that no, in many no. years. No, man. you might have heard about Fedora. They're the guys that got their service oh, hack last week. You mean Fedora Core? Yeah, no, yeah. Fedora. Oh, no, they're the project. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're, no, oh, I don't okay. Know. All right, but seriously, try this out. It's a great system. I, am I going to switch to it? Probably like half time on at least one machine. Oh, now, really? That's, that's I'm a, gonna. I'm up for consideration. I think. That's a big jump for me. Yeah, boy. I, think I mean, I mean, realistically, that's so a big jump. There's so many things. Because I going. need to spend time in GNOME. It might be I have easier to. for me. I started on KDE. Yeah. I started on KDE, so it might be easier for See, me. That was a GNOME switch, guy. Yeah. 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 I was always a GNOME guy. All right, Brian. But yeah, it's we gotta great. wrap this thing up. Uh, if I had to give it a star rating, this is a four out of four stars. I mean, this is a stellar release. This is not just. I mean, it's evolutionary. It's not whole new reinvention. So much polish. So many cool new toys. Gotta love it. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of this week's amazing broadcast. Now, I just want to point something out to everybody. All right. That this was the best Linux show ever made. Probably. Probably. I mean, it's now, the latest is, episode. What are we so. at here? What are we at? Uh, season 15, episode four? Yes, sir. Best thing ever. Not just our best ever. Best thing ever. Oh, that's good. Best I'm glad thing, I was part of that. Best thing that ever was on video. Was that because... With Linux in it. Can I ask you, was that because you know. I announced to folks today that we have jupiterbroadcasting.com slash listen for the live audio stream? I think that's part of it. I mean, just think folks could listen in their car on the way to work, on the way home. Just plug it in and stream. It's phenomenal. That's it pretty change, cool. It changes everything. That might have made it the best episode we, we, ever. We, that might have made it. We talked about KD 4.6, and that was awesome. Probably. there was. We talked about having uh, one new rack store. units on your desk. 16 core ARM servers. Dude, think about this. Four one U rack units with sixteen cores. How wow. many? How many cores is that's that? Like ninety five cores. Dude, that's one hundred and twenty seven cores. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, whoa. yeah. Stop mathing me yeah. right now. Yeah, I just screwed you up in there. This right is there, not the I? math action. Show. All right, so, uh, so what I'm saying is, good job watching because you caught the best thing ever. <laughs> Um, so if you want to get a hold of us, there's a, we're over on Facebook. If you like to have your privacy violated, yeah. over at facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. We're on Twitter. If you uh, want to get spammed. Twitter.com slash Brian Lund Duke, my yeah. whole name, or Chris LAS. Yeah, he buddy. even has Linux Action Show in his name. That's dedication. Hardcore. That's love. That's the man with the you plan. You know what? If you want to know when we do all of this stuff live or any other show, go over to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. Because all of our stuff over is posted over there. It's in Pacific, but there's a link to convert it to your local time zone. Man, I should really look at that so then I would know when we're recording the shows. Luckily, it's the same time every week, Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific <laughs> time. Now, except for next week. Oh, that's and then true. Next week, what's going to happen? We don't know. I'm, I'm having a child. I got a kid. She's coming out. She's you know coming I out. Do? I might. I, I was know. thinking I might like do a behind the scenes tour, uh, like a like a five minute thing, a and, give, and let tour? everybody let everybody know how you're doing, so that way people just yeah. know. Yeah. And then I'll put that out and just remind every, everybody. Maybe maybe we, maybe I can send along a picture. You can throw a little picture of That'd the new cool. kid. Cool. Yeah. Let's yeah. So maybe something like you that. But do? No, no show. Throw a little picture. Throw a picture of uh, of uh, your kids. My kid. This is, this is the little Jupiter Broadcasting Kid Show. That's cute. There we and go. And you know what else too? And and this will be a perfect opportunity. Is if you recall a few episodes back, Alan came on. And we talked about BSD. Uh, BSD. Yeah. He's got a BSD like tricks and tips segment that he recorded that didn't make it into that episode that I'll, nice. I'll put in that. Nice. So folks will get that too. Wanted to throw a, a little note out to a lot of folks because uh, I've been getting a lot of questions on this. Uh, so now I'm not going to use this as a, as a pimping myself time. This is purely public service announcement. Okay. All right. So Illumination Software Creator 3.0 came out a oh, few weeks back. Hear. It was really, really cool. Yada, yada, yada. It's amazing. Whatever. You should probably buy it. But 
the big thing is uh, we also have Illumination available through the Ubuntu Software yeah. Center. We're like the seventh app available That's in there. Awesome. So we're, you know, we're their early adopter. Um, we haven't been able to update Illumination to the latest version in the software creator. We, we finally got really? that all worked out. Oh, so good. if you've bought it through the Ubuntu Software Center, don't worry. Uh, by the coming. time you you watch this, if you're watching it probably like midweek, uh, by like Monday, Tuesday, you'll have a, a brand new, healthy, amazing version oh, with, with sparkles on it uh, through that through the Ubuntu Software Center. So there's your public service announcement. So I just wanted to let everyone know because I've gotten a lot of emails about that. People, hey, are, people, are, like, people are using it. Wait a minute. Uh, you got a new version out. Uh, I bought it through the Canonicals uh, store there and uh, I don't have a new version. Early days, those I'm kinds like, of things got to be okay, worked It's okay, it's okay. We're working the kinks out. Yeah. But it's actually really cool how they set it up. Oh yeah? Because they set up basically so uh, I have my own PPA. Uh, so there's that my own sense. custom repository for uh, illumination okay. hosted on Canonical servers. That's that's a good way to do but it. they were kind of working out the kinks in the process for how I update that that, that PPA. Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> so we were working that out. But uh, I got I to gotta give a hat off. Uh, the folks at Canonical, so helpful. Yeah? Like, like Thursday late in the day. They want to work it out. You I got this email. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could show you the whole email. It was like four pages long with detailed instructions. Oh, if this goes wrong, this might go wrong. Then you'll do these sets of instructions. Like it was every Early days, thing. man. Yeah. Early days. But, but anyway, cool. they're they're doing great. I, I just wanted to give a little, little uh, hats off to them on that one. And then also, if you guys are using Ubuntu or using SUSE, Mm. And using the Illumination Software Creation Station, the award-winning distribution of Linux that uses uh, Illumination Software Creator, that will be updated to a whole new version as well pretty soon. Cool. So I just wanted to throw that out there because those are amazing things. It could be out there, those so are, why not? Those are Linux-powered amazing things. I like that. We, we change things here at the Linux Action cool. Show. And that's one of the ways we do it. All right, Wait everyone. A minute. The forum. JupiterColony.com. Oh, yeah. You should go there. We talk there sometimes. There's a Linux Action Show thread in there. Lots of good discussions. It's great. And uh, some Android users are joining in there, and they're recommending different apps to each other and, and stuff come on, like that. Forums. And How old say, school is that, right? You know what? If you check the show notes for the Linux Action Show, in there I put a link to Mad Joe's list, and he's been keeping a list on AppBrain of every Android app I've ever picked. Wow. I swear, if you... I, these apps are good apps. If you've got a new Android phone... You should just go and download all those. I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. And honestly, now sometimes when I've I've, I've wiped my phone and I've put a new ROM on you here, I'll go, there. I'll go to Mad Joe's yeah. list and be like, bop, bop, That's bop, awesome, bop, bop. <laughs> I give it I give it till next Monday until Lifehacker randomly posts a list of all the top apps and it's exactly that list. <laughs> or if I was if I was him, I'd just start just picking off Lifehacker. the list over time. You know? <laughs> just <laughs> haven't they already been doing that? Oh maybe. Just kidding, Lifehacker. Oh, we kid. Um kid. what else? What else we got? I think what else we got? It, I don't Wait know. a minute. Wait okay. a minute. Wait a minute, because I'm not going to be here next week. Yeah. If you get bored, okay. let's say next Sunday you're bored, you yeah. want to play some games, you want to chat with some people. Yeah. Why not go over to uh, Lunduke.com? Go to the Blunduke House of Lunduke BBS. Tell the that into that. Only Linux powered BBS running on an Asus Triple E 700 netbook yeah. uh, that you can hop on into and play trade. You don't even need Open GL Acceleration to play those games. <laughs> you don't need to. No way. You can do it from the terminal. You can just tell that on into bbs.lunduke.com. And actually, you know, we haven't mentioned it, but uh, if you're a Minecraft uh, player, because you know, why haven't we talked about Minecraft? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, I should say. We've crested like the 3,500 some odd calls to That's the BBS awesome. since it launched like two and a half months ago. Um, it's huge. If it's you're huge. A, if you're a big Minecraft player, head over to uh, JupiterCalling.com and there's a Minecraft form in there. There is a lot of people playing Minecraft, Minecraft yeah. around Jupiter Broadcasting now. And we have uh, public servers set up. So if you want to play multiplayer and that, in my opinion, is the sweetest way to play Minecraft. Otherwise, now, it's hold tedious. on a second. Hold on a second. Have we uh, have we shown this picture? Uh, I don't know. What picture is it? Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> which one are you thinking, dude? Dude, no, it's 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 this sucker here. <laughs> oh, 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 this was made in Minecraft. Yeah, So this was uh, made on our Minecraft server. Oh, that's See, not your screen. That's your screen. That's my screen. This is a picture. I, I don't know if any of you guys have seen this, but there was a there was a face I made uh, probably about two years ago. And it was I made this dorky face on the show on the show. And then what happened was everyone decided to go ahead and and uh, and modify it here. I'll, yeah. I'll show you a whole bunch here. Uh, and uh, we put up pictures of, of me uh, photoshopped onto every possible way that, that they but, could come up but with. But come on, somebody made your face in Minecraft, and it's huge, and, Brian. And it's in Minecraft. It is and that, it's, it's huge. To give you a scale, that is a shot of the entire world zoomed in on your face. And it, it is ginormous. If you look at the entire world, and I don't have a screenshot here, it, there's a there's a picture over in the forum, yeah, jupitercolor.com yeah. if you want it. Um, but it is gigantic. <laughs> like, you can see my head 
from space with my little stupid dorky look and my headphones it's on. It's great. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, the chat room's loving that. So too. Minecraft, <laughs> it's good stuff. You, you gotta, you gotta love it. By the way, if anyone wants to put my head on things, that's totally great. Yeah, go I ahead. love that. You can find those pictures yeah. over at Facebook.com/slash Jupiter Broadcasting. Yeah, there's a, there's album. a there's an Im, a photo album. I think it's called Brian's Head Used Properly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's All right, stuff. everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Linux Action Show. And we'll see you with a whole big show in a couple of weeks. Most likely. Yeah.